Welcome to StartupRad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and welcome everybody. This is Joe from StartupRad.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany, again with another guest here for you. Keep in mind, we're also the world's first 24-7 internet radio station dedicated to tech startups and tech companies. Learn more down here in the show notes. And if you haven't done already, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button here. For everybody who's seeing this on YouTube, I'm sorry for the marks here on my forehead, but it's getting warm here in Germany. And I was wearing a baseball hat during my afternoon walk and actually <laughs> it, left, it, left some, <laughs> it left some remains here. But nonetheless, I do have Alessandro here with me. Hey, how you doing? Hello, I'm good. Doing, uh, I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here because you are actually the head of security at Bidwala, um, a Berlin-based challenger bank that offers swaps between fiat currency and cryptocurrencies, right? That's correct, yes. So let me first ask you outright, how can any sane person be wanting to be the head of security in a crypt in a field related to cryptocurrencies? I mean, it, it, it's like sleeping in the middle of a minefield, isn't it? Um, yes, indeed, it is. And um, when I actually, <laughs> when I decide to move at Bitvala, uh, I'm of course in contact with other security practitioners in the industry and most friends um, ask me, why you didn't even do that? Are you crazy? Um, yeah, definitely. I like challenge. Um, and um, I, I'm not considering this impossible, but uh, yes, it, it's extremely difficult. And that's one of the, the reasons why I decided to take this challenge. Ah, I see. So you like challenges. Can you tell us a little bit about what like basics to understand in cryptocurrencies because for many people it's like normal currencies you have them on your bank account and if you don't grant anyone access to your bank account everything's totally fine but in cryptocurrencies it can be totally different because if your cryptocurrency is once gone it's gone forever no getting back right uh, yeah i would actually also question the fact that uh, uh, your money is secure in the bank in the sense that um, Actually, that money is guaranteed, especially in Europe, by uh, you know by European scheme. So it's guaranteed by a central bank up to a certain amount. So that means that uh, um, let's say over a hundred thousand euro, you might not even may be sure that uh, you know that those deposits are guaranteed. But but yeah, um, I would say um, on the on the cryptocurrency side, uh, you can see this uh, from multiple perspective. On one side, you can say that um, uh, in certain situations, you can control your own finance. So you can actually have, uh, make sure that, um, you know, that your uh, your money is under your control. On the other side, uh, uh, you might decide to store part of this finance in, uh, I don't know, in an exchange or uh, let's say to end over the keys. Um, in our case, we, um company I work for is non-custodian right now. That means that uh, the customer keep to um, can keep the, the secrets to, to move the, uh, their assets. Um, one of the downside of this is that, of course, you need to to make sure that those keys are stored in a safe place. And in case you lose them, uh, you won't be able to ask, for example, Bitpala to recover these funds. Um, so you will have to make sure that you, uh, you actually manage this correctly and that uh, you can actually um, own, let's say, um, all the information that are necessary to to move these funds. So basically, l l let us get some tips how to keep your keys safe because I do believe if you display them in your uh, in your living room, it's not most likely the most safe place, right? And you have to make sure uh, that you never ever like really lose it because. That would be the problem. Then you can also not recover uh, your cryptocurrencies, right? Absolutely. And um, so th there are there are several ways to do it, and it also, of course, depends on uh, 
um, on the risk. Let's say security people, they like to talk about risk. Um, and, and that's something that every person should say. So uh, I, for example, I, I, I will not tell you there is one single solution for everybody. Um, it depends on the amount of money. You might decide, for example, to... So imagine, for example, that you have um, one uh, the equivalent of $1 million in Bitcoin. And you you probably don't need to spend $1 million every day, right? So you don't need that kind of liquidity in your pocket. So it probably makes sense not to have that with you at every time, you know, and not to have the seed in a place or let's say the secret in a place where it can be recovered by people who might know that you have so much money or that you might want to, to get this information from you. So th- this is one first step. Um, so also what we call operational security. If you do have a good uh, amount, a big amount of liquidity, you should probably make sure that uh, that the least number of people know about that because um, um, there might be a situation in which uh, you might be actually forced to hand over this uh, uh, the seeds or keys or even uh, if not handing over to, to do a transaction just because somebody might try to actually um, um, get hold of your funds. Um, personally speaking, I think, uh, let's say, technically speaking, I, I consider that one of the best way to um, to keep the funds is to save them on a wallet that you manage, for which you only have the secret keys. And um, the best possible way is, uh, for example, a paper wallet. Yeah, a paper wallet is still stored in a say in a, in a place where that you can trust, or maybe even uh, shared among people that you trust. Let's say. Um, imagine having a seed that you split among the people that you trust that they don't even have to know um, about the existence of each other. So you could split your secret in three and give it to your mother, for example, or your sister or your wife and um, uh, and make sure that uh, they hold the copy for you. Um, this is the most paranoid version of it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really like this. In cryptocurrencies, you have to have the highest level of uh, of um, paranoia, right? That's that's the thing, um, basically. But when you talk about like um, paper backups, like keys, uh, keywords, and stuff like this, you should have it on paper. Yes, of course, but not stored in just one place. You do a handful of photocopies and spread it between different locations because if your host burns down. Your money is also gone, right? Absolutely, and it also depends on the amount of money. So let's say in the moment in which, let's imagine you are your mask, and uh, in this case, uh, I don't know, um, you have the, this two two billion or a one and a half billion that he invests in cryptocurrency. You know, uh, imagine he has a seat in his pockets. I mean, I don't think so. I would recommend the case to probably even consider custody solution. There are service provider where it might become worth uh, actually ending over the seeds, uh, I don't know, to a specialized company. Um, but, but yeah, it's, um, it, it's a nice challenge. And I would say for small investors, the, one of the most appropriate way is to store the vast majority of funds, uh, for example, like, like we just said on paper. And then maybe if they want to have some liquidity because they want to use it for whatever reason they might consider uh, putting part of it in uh, in wallets that they can carry on, yeah? for like example, like uh, a Bitfala or a, a custody solution or um, another other wallet. Mm-hmm. I see. Um, j- just to stay a little bit on the fancy side, what you, would you recommend for Elon Musk how he stores his cryptocurrencies? Because first, I would say, he should split it up in multiple accounts and keep them safe in different ways and in different places. Would that be a good approach? Um, I mean, I will go also a little bit further for that amount of money, but yes, that will definitely be a good approach. Yeah. <laughs> would, would be a good idea. I see, see, see. Um, what, what do you guys are at Bitwala doing to keep your clients safe? Can you actually keep your cryptocurrencies with Bitwala or do you have like a trusted partner who actually does this? Uh, so uh, let's say I will speak to what we are until today is um, actually one of the reasons uh, why I found uh, Bitwala interesting even before I joined is that um, uh, the current uh, product that we provide are uh, non-custodian. 
So that means that uh, in the case of the Bitcoin wallet, it's a, it's a multi-signature wallet, um, which means that uh, Bitpala technically is not able to move funds for the customer. So the customer holds, um, holds the key to the assets. And uh, for the Ethereum wallet, um, we also managed to, uh, to use the non-custodial approach without a multi-signature wallet. Um, so in this specific case, we're using um, uh, what is called a secure enclave or a strong box, even if you have an iPhone or an Android. There are special uh, components, special hardware chips that are shipped with every Android of the latest generation or every iOS. And we actually initialize the keys that are used to protect uh, the wallet directly into the hardware. Um, so that means that basically they cannot be extracted by an attacker. They cannot be extracted by, not even by uh, what is called uh, jailbreaking the phone or becoming root on the Android phone, uh, because you actually need to to perform much more advanced operation. And uh, yeah, so it, it's considered to be quite secure. Um, and it, it really works good, I would say. Um, yeah, and uh, so that's um, how we manage this currently. Mm-hmm. I see. And um, do, do, do you have some other tips right now? Somebody out there looking to uh, do some cryptocurrencies. Yeah, they know all the fancy stuff, yada, yada, yada. They should get a physical device, get it very secure, have paper backups, store them in different places, different safes, different vaults, and uh, never tell anybody about it. it it is that like the bottom line we're talking about for for like small amounts below 100 million euros <laughs> uh, not really i think um uh, i i wouldn't even do that for that small amount uh, so this is uh let's say the, the <laughs> so so that that yeah that that uh, I, I mean, I need to be honest on that. If I um, if I wanted to sell one thousand or one or two thousand euro worth, I will just uh, keep it either uh, let's say on a on a wallet, even on a custodial one, um, and then decide uh, for um, to move it uh, only in case uh, the, the, the let's say the relative price of Bitcoin becomes so high that. Uh, uh, you know that somebody might actually be interested in to getting that. So the the, the question in security, it's always uh, what is the threat. So you let's say you have one thousand euro in, in the pocket. Is there actually a potential threat that might cause you to lose this uh, this amount of money? And um, a private person in Germany that uh, let's say he opens um, an account on an exchange or on Bitvala. Uh, for, in my opinion, for uh, an amount of a few thousand euros, probably it's not really at risk of uh, somebody, um, you know, uh, trying to get into um, into his custodial or non-custodial wallet. Um, if the amount of money becomes higher and the lifestyle start changing, then probably, um, yeah, probably I will consider a non-custodial solution only or paper wallet or like we said, the paranoia scenario we had before. But f- for a small amount, I absolutely um, do recommend it on, on on a risk basis. Yeah. So if you, let's say, start uh, investing 200 euro tomorrow and telling all your friends, hey, I bought 200 euro in Ethereum. And um, after a while, you might expect this 200 euro to be worth uh, uh, 2,000. And these people, or this um, maybe on the street, or let's say people that uh, are not actually uh, are just, uh, I'd say, in German bekannter. So uh, people acquaintances. Do, yes, acquainted. Uh, might, you know, it might tell to somebody else, and the someone else what might actually uh, target you. Yeah, but it's a it's a very unlikely scenario. I mean, uh, I know of very few cases where this happened, and. Uh, yeah, so the you know there is basically always a, a disconnect between between the paranoid use case and the actual possibility that this might happen to you. Yeah. At least since my interview with a um, with a Munich-based startup Tangany, who actually provides those custody solutions for other people, I know you're always on the safe side if you're in cryptocurrencies, at least a little bit paranoid. <laughs> yes, you have to be. I mean. Uh, Honestly, I recommend always to be a little bit paranoid. Um, 
even outside of the cryptocurrency, for example, when it's up to personal data, let's say, you know, when uh, you're opening accounts on the internet and you're sharing information about you, this might also involve um, your financial profile or information about whether or not you're trading with cryptocurrency. So uh, then, this, you know, this company might then resell this information and then uh, it, it's, uh, it's always good to be a little bit paranoid. Ah, I see. Uh, that is really good to know. Um, thank you very much for those tips. For everybody who'd like to learn more, down here in the show notes, there will be a link to the Bitwala blog. And I do assume you guys also do have some tips on hands there, right? Uh, yes, uh, we do provide information about, uh, for example, how to customers can protect from phishing. Uh, or a customer can uh, protect from certain type of uh, fraud that we see in the industry. Uh, I think we're going to publish a new blog entry this week, uh, which is related to sc remote screen sharing fraud, uh, which is um, happening also outside of the crypto industry, and um, especially since Corona and COVID time started. So, yeah, we try to keep people informed also on our blog. That's very good. Actually, um, talking about custodians, we've always used the term custodians for everybody who's living in an English-speaking country. Usually, they know a custodian as some adult taking care of a child. But actually, that's not the case. When we talk about custodian, we talk about like way back in the time when there were big banks and they had big vaults. And in those vaults, you stored paper securities and they've been the custodians of your securities. And coming from this, there are also crypto custodians who also tend to have big vaults, but actually the cybersecurity is much more important. You can, of course, uh, learn more down here in the show notes as well as the Bitwala blog. Alessandro? It was just a pleasure having you here for like a very short segment. Thank you very much. And hope to see you soon with uh, some more uh, paranoid tips in the future. <laughs> Thank you. It was nice as well. Thank you. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. See you. If you are a professional looking at the European startup scene, Germany is a place you cannot miss. Fortunately for you, there is startuprad.io the authority on German startups. This English-only podcast brings you fresh interviews each week. Most likely, you have never heard or read anything on these startups before in English, but you will in the future. Be ahead of the curve and subscribe to StartupRad.eo podcast or check for the StartupRad.eo internet radio station. Check your Alexa for the StartupRad.eo skill as well.